Warning. The following video contains hunting and shooting that's educational in nature, but may be offensive to some people. Viewer discretion is advised. All right, everybody, the purpose of this video is going to be to take this white tailed doe that I shot the other day using a 50 BMG, and it dropped her right on her butt. But the purpose of this video, I'm going to take and real quick remove the, I'm just going to quarter this deer up. It's been hanging up for a few days. I skinned it. And then I gutted it and washed it out real good and I left it in the walk-in cooler for a few days. So it's nice and cool right now. The weather kind of sucks. There's talking about rain, so we have to go ahead and get this started. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get started quartering this up, removing the back straps, tenderloins, and kind of get it off to the side. But the purpose of the video is that everybody, when you wind up killing a deer, you got to do something with your meat. Okay, you don't want to waste any meat. And for years and years, I've seen people throw away the rib cages, throw away the backbone, throw away the, the leg bones and all. They just throw it away. And there's a lot of good meat left on those bones. The purpose of this video is to get it down to scrap that most people would throw away and show you how we can salvage even more meat off those bones. Really, really good meat. It's a simple thing to do. It'll uh, make you feel better because you have literally no waste and the coyotes and dogs will be pissed off because you picked the bones clean. So let's go ahead and get started. The way I like to do this is I like to hang the deer typically with the head down and the rear end up in the air. And I always start out by removing the back straps. The back straps are arguably some of the best meat there is on a deer. So you have two back straps, one on each side of the spine and they're long, kind of round-shaped pieces of meat. You want to cut them off, trying to keep your knife as close to the bone as possible. Be sure to remove any pieces of fat or tendons that you see while processing your animal. Once I've done that, I move to the shoulders. I remove both of the shoulders, and typically the shoulders are some pretty tough meat. You're going to remove those shoulders and set them aside. Next is the rib cage and the torso area. What I wind up doing is removing any big chunks of meat that I see off the rib cage. This could be meat on the back, the side of the guts, right in front of the hindquarters, or any large piece of meat and set it aside. Next is going to be the best part of the deer. You're going to take the tenderloins out, and that's two small pieces of meat just on the inside of the body cavity, kind of like on the inside of the small of the back area. Again, there's going to be some meat left and I'll tell you what to do with that later. After removing the tenderloins, you're gonna be left with a carcass without any back strap. What I like to do next is cut the rib cage off and you'll wind up with two sides. You'll need a bone saw to do this. Once you've removed the ribs, you're left with the backbone and neck. What you wanna do next is remove the backbone and even though we kept the knife as close to the bone as possible, there's still quite a bit of meat left as you can see on the backbone and neck. Next we'll move to the hindquarters and once you've separated them lay it all out on the table and you see all the different pieces of the animal that you've got now to work with. Then go ahead and remove all the meat that you can with your knife off those bones. What I do now is take my turkey frying bucket, take the bone scraps, cut them up into manageable sizes and put them in the turkey frying pot. Next I fill the pot up with water just enough water to cover up the bones. Then I set it on the fire. I bring the water to a soft boil and I leave it for about four hours. After four hours, I drain the water and put the bone scraps into a pan. After doing this, the extra meat just falls off the bone. And as you can see in the video, there's nothing left on the bones, which means that all the meat is yours and I'll show you what to do with it. All right, so at this point, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the already cooked meat we're gonna run it through a meat grinder and catch it. And what you're gonna have when it's all said and done is already brown, ground up venison. And it's ready to put in either spaghetti, sloppy joes, lasagna, uh, just about anything. And it's already brown and it's tender and it's delicious. We have taken what most people would normally throw away off a white-tailed deer and we have taken all the meat and we've gotten probably about 20 pounds of browned ground venison ready to use in chili, lasagna, spaghetti, whatever you want to use in sloppy joes. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, make sure and share it with a friend. And while you're at it, if you've got any questions or comments, post them below. And also, how about subscribing to our channel? Thanks for watching.